guys today we are going to be reacting to the montreal canadians documentary from the 2023 nhl draft it'll give us a ton of info a ton of new details about what the habs were thinking with every single pick so if you guys are excited hit that like button hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell and let's get straight into this thing now if you can't tell i am very excited right now but we're about to get so much info especially on the reinbacher pick that is what i'm most interested in here all right let's do this i'm so excited to watch this the jitters oh boy this video is gonna be so toxic isn't it <laughs> i can already see the comments under this habs uh video oh my goodness anymore so it's it's a real this is a discussion we need to have are we doing are we doing the right thing you can make a trade but who is the best player and we think is special I think when you have the fifth pick overall, you're trying to get as many scouts as you can involved. This is going to be crazy. crazy. No, I'm not even Spani, so we will go to the Pesce, an excellent player who will play for a long time. But in the national league, and especially with the Cavs of Montreal. If you want to win, you have to take the winning goalie. Ooh! If you want to hope that the tools all come together, you can take the guys with better tools. Obviously, when it gets down to it, you know, Katz and I are, are uh, you know, pretty involved. Uh, when you're picking fifth, and for, for purposes of everybody here, it, it, Jeff and I appear to be going in the same direction. But this is this is we're, we're trying to flush this out, right? We've got to play devil's advocate, yeah, so people should speak up, express their their opinions here. I don't want anyone to feel like, you know, we have a predetermined sense here. We just need to flush the arguments out, pro or con. So everybody, if you've got an opinion, speak up. Okay, this is interesting. This is a really interesting start because we saw with the Habs all throughout the draft year how different the consensus was in everything. I mean, earlier we heard that Reinbacher and Dvorsky were going to be the picks, and then we heard a lot more about them going after Michkov and then Ryan Leonard and a lot of different options. Ultimately, they, of course, went with David Reinbacher fifth overall, but this just shows how unclear they were basically throughout the entire year and needing to need more context. I mean, with Kent Hughes wanting everybody to speak up it just shows how important this pick was for them here to pick players for nhl not any other league so we approach every pick the same way we're trying to get an nhl player Nick to, to the montreal canadians whether it's five or it's the last pick in the seventh round because sometimes they too become hall of famers i mean i'd hope so i mean they have some of some pretty good late round picks recently so that's good to hear I can't wait to see what Bob Ruff says in this video. <laughs> this is going to be crazy. Combine, it's something that starts uh, roughly a year in advance. Uh, all the players that we meet, uh, we gather different information and pick and choose which questions to ask. And Fowler, my boy. We have a, a unique focus to each interview. We can tailor um, each interview to each player. Um, obviously, we ask the basic questions that we ask every player, but if there's something specific that we want to um, ask each player about, um we can There's do that based on the information that we have on the looks like a pretty good interview obviously you're trying to gauge the kids just understanding of the game whether they're students of the game if they watch the game if they know other players opposition uh tendencies um how much do they watch hockey and obviously you want um hockey nerds as we say and uh, it, <laughs> it's meaningful i'll give you three shooters you can tell me if they're right or left here we go perfect okay harvey a passer he's a lefty lefty Perron Perron's a shooter and he's a righty he's got a really good shot uh, fine fine's a righty didn't see too much of it this year I'd say he's uh probably more of a passer yeah I do. This is interesting. As you guys know, Jacob Fowler was my best goaltender in the 2023 draft. And seeing this interview is really giddy for me because I love Fowler all throughout the draft process. And he ultimately became my number one in the draft goalie wise. But it's because of the smarts, the work ethic, and just the raw determination he has. I mean, he is a winner through and through what he was able to do in the USHL, just being dominant in every single game and that consistency. The Habs are already saw that, but they saw, I guess, the mental side of it with Fowler already. Already knowing exactly who he was facing in the USHL off the top of his head. I mean, this guy is going to be a stud, man. I'm so freaking excited. You can probably go up and down the whole USHL and I could name nice <laughs> love that confidence from fowler man it was ever a study as much as just not even a photo memory just you play against those guys and you know 
if you want to stop those guys, you're going to figure out real quick if he's a righty or lefty if you're on <laughs> I mean, you can't, you can't Fowler was the right choice, man. Wrong if it's a righty on his one side or a lefty on the other side. So yeah. I think if you don't know what hands they are, or third shooter or pass shooter, you're not going to be very successful. What a on pick. The, um, other questions, uh, more psychology-related questions, you want to see how the kid thinks. And, oh, boy. Uh, how quickly they make decisions <laughs> and uh, what might uh, be a cause of stress. Uh, you know the bank machine where you get the money, you put your card in, you get the money. Yeah. Uh, you are waiting in line to go to the machine, okay? Yeah. And there is a two uh, little old ladies there in front of you. Yeah. But before the next woman can get there, the guy comes straight in, goes right to the machine, just jumps in front of you folks and goes to the machine. What would you do? I would say something to the guy. There's respect to every guy or every human. Um, if there's a line, you gotta like respect the line and stay behind the line. Um, especially if they're like older women, they need a little bit longer. So you gotta respect that and help them. We only have 20 yeah. minutes with okay. each player, so that's not a lot. Very interesting question. I mean, that, I feel like that's kind of the consensus. Oh, yeah, you just you just help them and. And stay back in line i mean i feel like that would be expected maybe there was other maybe there was prospects that said uh, something different but uh very <laughs> we've heard of some wacky draft combine questions uh that one is definitely interesting a lot of time and uh we try to uh stay away from generic questions and uh maybe dive into the personality certainly not generic yeah, I, I i like to see a guy with some some fire and some intensity in his answers but I'm more interested in the guy who's bringing the weight of the inside. All right? Now tell me about him. Tell me about what makes him the biggest guy. I've been, you know, doubted and yeah, trying to prove go. people, of course people yeah. wrong my entire career. Yeah. I sat in my living room in a shirt and tie with my whole family and watched, you know, five or six hours the entire OHL draft, the yep. entire USHL draft, and to never see your name pop up on that screen is a, it's a pretty crappy feeling. To know that you played in the national championship, you played the national tournament twice, you won just about every youth championship you could win on you know, North America. Fowler's a dog, man. To talk to or to never see your name pop up is it's terrible. I don't read too much into the you know, different awards, but to win the award of goalie of the year in this league that I was undrafted, nobody wanted me. There were 16 teams and not a single one of them wanted me. I had to go out and prove that every single night that you messed with the wrong guy and you know, I'm still just <laughs> fortunate enough that I ended up in their corner and th that feeling sticks with me every day and you know the last thing I nice. want is any organization to look back and wish they would have taken a chance on me because all I've done is prove people wrong Ooh man Jacob Fowler is a dog man Jacob Fowler is an absolute dog that is an incredible quote I mean it just shows the passion that he has. Love to see that from him, though. I mean, that's the type of determination that he has in every single game, man. You can see it. You can sense it. It's great to see that talked about there. And then the physical testing, that's the third piece to it. And so we uh, process all of that. We have a system that uh, reflects each player's overall pie chart, so to speak. And uh, we discuss it in our meetings. Oh, boy. Are these gonna are these gonna be the are these gonna be the meetings? <laughs> are these gonna be the meetings? There's, there's only so so many chances that this organization does get to add talent. It's very hard. You can't do it in free agency anymore, really. You're getting older players and you have to pay them a lot of money, right? You pretty much have to draft or get lucky to get high end talent now, right? And sometimes you take a chance and I mean, he selected Leia Sanderson, so... No, we don't want to try this chance. And I just want to make sure we're making the right decision. <laughs> well, we're excited. Uh, you know, it's uh, much like last year we had the first overall pick. Um, you know, having the fifth overall selection this year, that opportunity doesn't come around very often. So I know uh, our amateur scouting staff and management, the entire organization, we're, uh, we're excited. We know we're going to welcome... Uh, you know, this is edited uh, really well, folks. Into the Montreal Canadiens organization, and we know it's going to be a player that uh, you know we think will be a part of our organization for a long time. Everyone is here uh, two, three days before the draft, just refining the list, you know, tweaking the list, putting, you know, dotting the i's, crossing the t's, 
So Billy, you saying you put you would put Fowler? Bob Ruff looks so tiny in yeah. this shot. <laughs> Fowler shows up every time and wins. It's 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 like almost it's crazy. No one's saying Fowler was good growing up. He was the best growing up. He's not better. He's not better than Fowler. Like if, you, if we're playing a game right now and I said, you, all right, I'm gonna, do you pick your team? Well, y'all got to be the NHL team. We're not facing the same thing. You said we'll face them at 24 team cut. I know, but if what I'm saying, he's already, he already, ma he's, he's like masked to this position. The other guys haven't. They have the tools. They haven't figured out in their head how to f***ing game. This kid does it. He's been doing it since he's like 10 years old. I like that though. On, on, I've, I'm, pr I'm almost, I, he said Fowler, right? So I'm pretty sure he's talking about Jacob Fowler. I mean, we're talking about Jacob Fowler and the tools that he has. Sure, it might not be as elite, elite as others, but he is a gamer. He is a consistent workhorse. And that's the type of player that I like a lot, especially on the goaltending side of things where you've mastered the mental side of it. And that was one of the biggest reasons why he was number one in my goalie rankings. Interesting to see that here, though. And he wants to do it. <laughs> uh, Jeff Gordon have to come in and calm and, things down. Um, fiery and uh, uh, active. Um, it's, uh, it's active. A good group. Uh, there's a lot of debate. Yeah. Sometimes it's uh, extremely passionate, and uh, that's good to see. I think management really likes um, everyone being on board and involved and having a voice. The and Gucci so glasses. <laughs> offer their opinion which is great and that's how we get to the uh, to the final product Still, we're all working to the same goal we're trying to win a stanley cup and yeah i'd want the kid who win wins the most he's never been the not top goalie ever ever look at his numbers it's yeah he's never not been the top goalie in the entire league not like not the starter he's never not been the highest save percentage in every league he's ever been in I can't deny it. I can't, but I just think we're going to regret not taking a, this kid. True. Now, they released the subtitles like midway through watching this, so we're going to watch this part, which was talked about in French, but it has the English subtitles so everybody can see it. What's Ça change au niveau des données, là, ça c'est évident. Là, euh, yeah, just a little bit. Alors on y va avec ce qu'on voit, avec nos, nos feelings, nos sentiments de comment un, un gardien va, va se développer. On, on ne sait pas, on va se préparer. Et puis si ça donne, ben oui, mais il faut vraiment que ça donne avec le consensus de toute l'équipe, de tous les dépisteurs. Et puis il faut le tout faire du sens parce que le gardien de but est aussi un. Le carrier. C'est important, mais c'est plus long aussi que les autres à se développer. When we left the meetings in Montreal, and we we left those two guys on that line together, we were listening to you guys for a few days and then going home, I, I, you know, I'm like, okay, Ryan Becker, just at five, you just have this feeling of what it could be, the upside of it all, right? So, I mean, that just been going through my mind. I think when we watched... Okay, Jeff Gordon. Is that like, is that Jeff Gordon having reservations about the Ryan Bucker pick? I'll, I'll, I'll just keep playing. Ryan Bucker play. Like I saw the compete. I saw the defending. He's, he's all about winning, not selfish. Like because like I, I, I'm like everybody talking about defense, but like he, I, in my opinion, he is so special, also in offense. Like he's like he's so good on the power play. He's so like he moves well. Like he reads the play well. He organizes passes. Every <laughs> he's highly, like, highly talented offensively. He's just not, he doesn't show it all the time because he plays such a smart, defensive first game. He's young in the league, but he's got so much skill. I saw him under pressure. We saw the games in, in the playoffs, and they were, they were hard games, and they were trying to run them. I didn't see him bail out once or panic with the puck, not once. I think it's hard to find that asset, like size, slide shot, D, I love. I really like him. He's a good player, but I think it'd be easier for everybody. Um, um. Wait, 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 wait. That asset, like size, slide shot, D. I love. I really. I like. Pl insert player here. I really like him. He's a good player, but I think 
be easier for everybody, including you guys and the, the staff, to find the bit that, that brings everything that is the hardest thing to find. And going back and looking at all the teams that won the Stanley Cup, they have that premier defenseman. And to come to that, that <coughs> there's no linebacker ahead of the Oh, okay. I'm going to go out on a limb here. I think they're talking about Mappy Michkov. Uh, just <laughs> it might be obvious, I know, but I think they're talking about Mappy Michkov here and this whole debate about, I guess, the value within the organization and everything. And it is true, having that superb defenseman is absolutely needed. And within Montreal system, they don't really have that. Maybe Ryan Bacher could be that. We'll have to wait and see. I do agree with some of the strength assessment there when it comes to the poise that he has, the consistency he has in his mature game. That's definitely one of the biggest strengths there. And the defensive acumen he has is incredible. It's great. And it's going to be great at the NHL level. We'll just have to see how much upside there is. Within the Hab Scouts, it seems like they have a lot of confidence in his offensive upside really being able to project. I'm not sure how much there will be, how much at least consistency there will be, but... I think with Reinbacher, at least again, getting a top four D, we'll see how far he's able to get up into maybe that top pair level. But it seems like for the Habs, they had, this is the debate. This is the Meechkov versus Reinbacher debate they are having right here, right now. And it seems like Reinbacher is pulling ahead, which ultimately we knew was going to happen in, the, in, in this video, but crazy to see happen in real time. So that now the fourth round, Wow. Je pense que les, les choix de quatrième, cinquième, sixième, septième ronde, je pense que c'est des choix très importants. Fait que tu regardes en Harvey Pinard de ce monde, c'est un choix de septième ronde. Fait que c'est des choix qui sont très importants pour nous. C'est sûr que quand tu repêches premier ou cinquième, ils sont, sont super importants ces joueurs-là. Mais les autres aussi sont aussi Very importants. Very true. Donc, il Habs have great depth in the, the prospect pool for a reason. Right now, we're choosing among Jekai, the Russian D, that's 101. Jekka is the, the unicorn. So, I, to me, I, I personally like to walk away with that guy and then chance it that the D will be there at 110. You can get this Russian D there, Konyushkov, in the fourth round. I like him a lot. I think he could be a real good asset. I like him a lot. Yes. Oh. I think we I, he, we shouldn't even be talking about him in the fourth round. If he's there in the fourth round, I would jump dice just to get him. You know, we talked about if it This is really interesting too. So it looked like Jack I, of course, Arbor Jack I's brother, was a premier target in the fourth round. Now the Habs did ultimately get him 101st overall in the 2023 draft. Personally, for me, drafting him that high when he got 25 points in 68 games as an overager in the OHL is asinine. And it's kind of funny that Nick Bobrov is the one going after him, really putting a commitment out for him. I wouldn't have even drafted him. Maybe you put up a seventh round flyer to appease Arbor, but I would be genuinely stunned if this is an NHL player. There's a low probability that Jekai is going to be there, even though it's apples and oranges. And Miller, we got uh, our third pick in the fourth round. Would you be happy with that placement? Au niveau des belles discussions, des bons débats, et puis. C'est pas encore fini la draft. Euh, ok. Euh, est le 28, Here we go. On est, on est très excité. This is where it all comes down to it. I cannot wait to see this part, folks. If you guys are enjoying, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Great to have you guys for the reaction today. This has been fantastic, though, so far. So much behind the scenes stuff here. Ugh. Right here is going to disturb the next uh, run of picks. Trust me when I tell you, this right here is the wild card. The Canadian DeMario are proud to select David Reinbacker. <laughs> the added of the Carey Price bit. Good for them. <laughs> you have to go with best player available. That's exactly what Kent Hughes, the Montreal Canadiens, did here in selecting Reinbacker. All good, all good. You got a service to eat it, right? Uh, I'm so nervous. Oh my Welcome. god. Welcome. Thank you. I'm so happy to yeah. be in this organization. Good for David, though. Yeah. Great way to the Stanley Cup, I hope. Yeah. Wow. It looks great on you, buddy. Yeah, thank you very much.
MSL, my boy. Marty looks like he wanted beach golf. I'm kidding, by the way. Okay, I'm kidding. That culture. We felt that this player embodies the type of culture that. Culture. There's that word again. Marty, the coaching staff, are trying to build. You guys are good on follow, right? Ryan Montreal. Good for Jacob, man. This is so fun to see. Maybe him and Cole can take some French classes. Pressure's a privilege, so. The more pressure it is, I think it just means that uh, you just got to go out and perform your best. I think when we when we look at the draft, uh, you know, we're all about the best player. Who's going to be the best player? Uh, not necessarily today. I know we spent a lot of time talking about Jeff. That. I think yeah, that's every team actually. Forward, so we're trying <laughs> to get the best player uh, over the long haul. That's brilliant stuff. That's brilliant, brilliant stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. It's for David Reinbacher. Montreal Canadiens. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> he looks overwhelmed. <laughs> I would be too. I can't even lie. Oh, that's so cute. Oh man. <laughs> he looks so overwhelmed. Oh man. Wow. Well, that was an experience, folks. Lots of behind-the-scenes stuff on the Montreal Canadiens draft, and lots of good stuff. I mean, we really only got, the, I guess, the culture word being thrown out right there at the very end, but I'm glad that we finally got a look into what they were thinking with the Reinbacher pick, the values that they were putting out there, and it makes a lot more sense when you put it in that lens, going, of course, for, I guess, more of the safer pick, but in ways that could help them down the line. It still wouldn't have been my pick, and you guys know that, obviously, but I do think David is an excellent person for what we've seen so far, is going to be an excellent character in that room for sure, and I think he'll be steady. I think he'll be solid. I don't think he'll fix that defense necessarily. I don't think he'll be a number one guy personally, but I do think he brings a lot of good values for the Habs and on the defense they didn't have a lot of. And I'm glad that we got a bigger look into that. A lot of looks into the Jacob Fowler pick, which I adored. I mean, you guys know how much I love that Jacob Fowler pick. One of the best picks in the entire draft, getting the best goalie in the draft where they did. Great to see more of that. But that was just an amazing video. Thank you guys so much for tuning in with me. If you guys didn't enjoy, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell for more breakdowns, more hockey content just like this all throughout the year and more Habs content coming soon for you guys as well to make sure you don't miss a thing. Of course, comment down below your thoughts on the entire video. What did you guys think? Do you guys think that this draft was what it was supposed to be for the Habs? Do you still think it's a great one for the Habs? Do you think it's a bad one? Let us know down below. Let us know all your thoughts though on this video. What all the scouts were thinking too. Of course, the Reinbacher over Michikov pick and the implications there. Let us know all your thoughts. Of course, make sure you share the video of all the hockey and has fans you guys know online and click on this card for all of my hockey talk right one playlist. Don't do a lot of reactions. This was a ton of fun though. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.